at this point I would like to talk about, uh, uh, we talked about the aqua map, all quadrants, all lines, all stages, all states, and all types. Well, I'm going to leave lines to the side. We already talked about um, uh, quadrants and what they represent, and I'm going to talk about um, uh, stages and uh, this vertical dimensionality to, to the aqua model that is, I, I feel, absolutely revolutionary and, and takes uh, a, a recovery from what Ken Wilber calls a flatland model, which would be sober or not sober, and puts it into a whole de developmental perspective that makes uh, extreme sense and helps us to to meet people where they are at developmentally, but also not get in their way if they choose to stay where they're at or they choose to keep developing higher. And some of the develop uh, the the, the um, approaches to treatment that are current, I think, actually start getting in people's way when they want to um, to to go to higher levels. And uh, I won't talk about this it. kind of controversial. I won't get into that right now, but we'll get back to that. So when I'm um, uh, teaching. Uh, students in, in treatment or otherwise, I'll start off with a very basic um, a model of development and, that, and, I, and I frame that in four basic uh, stages. The first is egocentric. An egocentric person would care only about the ego, the self, me, I'm all that matters. And uh, this is a obviously very basic primitive level of development. After that comes ethnocentric where you begin to care about your identified group. You care about your tribe, your clan, your religion, your country, your football team, your gang, however you, you know, your clique, however you, that's identified. After that becomes world-centric, which is much higher level of, of moral development, which you care about everyone. You see that, that for our problems to be addressed in, 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 a, in a truly uh, deep and holistic way, it has to be win, 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 win for everyone. And that... Um, we can't have winners and losers. It begins just to create all kinds of imbalances that eventually come out in all sorts of painful, um, uh, catastrophic ways eventually. And above that, you can, uh, you, um, developmental theorists um, who have, have traced it to that high level. I mean, at first, uh, developmental theorists were only um, interested in um, childhood development. And after you got to be 18 or so, development stopped. You were just an adult. Mm. Well, Lovinger and others, uh, Suzanne Cook-Quarter took it after that and said there are definitely adult development that goes on. But at these higher uh, stages of development, the highest we've identified as a cosmocentric uh, moral value system where uh, you care not just for uh, all people, but for all sentient beings, as the Buddhists say. Um, um, everyone is included, the whole universe. The water, the trees, the animals, the bugs, the uh, Democrats and Republicans and everything in between and all around that. So there's, this is a very high level of development. Why is this important in the, the study and the understanding of addiction and the application of an integral treatment uh, model to addiction is because uh, my contention is, and uh, this, this is I, I'm, I'm very excited about the possibility for, for people doing PhDs and master's theses and whatnot, developing the research on this, but I've seen it over and over and I think most uh, recovering addicts or alcoholics would agree that, uh, say you, you start at a, a healthy world-centric level of development when, when the, the progression, you start using alcohol or drugs, whatever the substance is, and the progression begins. Well, um, addiction is devolutionary. So if you start at world-centric, you will soon, as the disease progresses, you will go to ethnocentric, where your, your circle of care begins to become less and less. And at a certain point, there's a really loyalty and kind of love within the drug-using community, you know, where, hey, we're all in this together, and, you know, we use, and we have our identity, our clothes, our music. There's a certain thing that goes on, and after a while, that begins to deteriorate and fall apart. You really don't give a shit about all these other people. You really just care about getting drugs, and you move to a very toxic level uh, uh, manifestation of an egocentric level where people are no longer um, uh, uh, no longer uh, I and thou, as, as, as Martin Buber said, uh, uh, another being that you relate to that is 
worthy of respect and dignity in a sense divine and sacred all this good stuff they just but people just simply become objects to be manipulated to be used to be taken out uh, used to, to secure uh, the supply of the substance and taken out in some sense manipulated or, or hurt or killed or whatever if they get in the way of your using so uh, you can actually see this progression happen uh, very quickly and the interesting thing about it is that uh, when people get into treatment and they start getting well, they're able to start to regain that, uh, that higher ground that they had before quite quickly. And if they were egocentric when they, uh, they um, started uh, using drugs, well, then it's going to take some work to um, um, uh, get them up the ladder. But my experience tells me that you at least need to get to a rather healthy uh, ethnocentric level for uh, sobriety to stick, okay, for recovery to happen. Because um, there is a great egocentric argument for getting sober, which is, you're going to die. You know, <laughs> ego, bye-bye. You will cease to exist. But there's a certain um, uh, compulsivity and screw you, don't tell me what to do at the egocentric level that really doesn't make it very possible. Uh, because uh, to, to recover, you have to actually listen to people and get some hu humility and also start to realize that, that your disease is affecting all those you care about and you owe them a give back and getting well, your children, your loved ones, your friends, your family. And if you don't have any of that, when you, it's very sad, but you'll need to develop that, that community to support you and people that you love and care about. So you at least have to get to ethnocentric to... Um, um, to recover, in, in my experience, and there is a um, there's a, a point in in recovery where people often have that that moment of realization of all the damage they've done, and the human conscious begins to come back online. And we talked about the the neocortex begins to come back online, and the reptilian brainstem is kind of you go, oh my God, look what I've done. And there's a deep sense of remorse, guilt, shame which is absolutely appropriate and good, okay? And you don't want to, to, to um, take that away from people. Oh, it's okay, or try to soften it. Let them, let them be there, let them feel it, because that's going to become the motivation for them to do the work and stick with it and get well. So it's very important that you go from this kind of sociopathic addict that doesn't care about anything or anybody to a person that has a human being that has values and cares again. And you go, oh, okay, my recovery is not just about me but it affects the world around me. That's a huge realization and a very important uh, moral developmental stage in, 